Lord one more time. Amen. I want to take this time to thank my son for allowing me to stand at the sacred desk. I am so proud of him because he is my boy. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. God is good. And his birthday is going to be on the 26th. And of course, you know, my lovely bride is sitting yes. over right there. Yes. Uh, just, just kiss that. You know, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on a minute. She fucked me. She fucked my glasses up. God the praise, the honor, and the glory. But you know, it's preaching time, regardless of whether he's my son or not. I still got to preach the word of God. Because I have one God to answer to. And that's the one that sit high and look low. This text this morning is a serious text. I, 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 I just want to be honest with you, I preached from it before. And, 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 and the Lord just told me, uh, spoke to my spirit, because I was wrestling about preaching this message once again, because the last time I was up, I was very sick, and I, I couldn't, my, 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 my physical body was just torn and worn, but, but God, he said, when you had your weakness, he's at his best. So, so now he's given the opportunity now to preach it from a different perspective, but the same perspective, but, but it's, 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 it's more like what I call uh, sounding the alarm. All right, all right. We got to sound the alarm because, see, I don't know if y'all realize it now, but something is strange on, going on right there in this world. Am I right about it? Yes, yes. it's, it's, it's a concerning thing that we have to deal with, and, yes. and, and, and we, we're going we're gonna to deal with it from the text from this, this morning. Yes. So I, I, want, I want to, I want to uh, come from 2 Kings, the 20th chapter, uh, verses 1 through 11. And I want you to turn to that for me, please. I want you to please stand for the reading of his holy word. And I will read. Uh, oh, you got it up there. See, my son is high tech. I'm not high tech. <laughs> my, my son is high tech. So uh, I guess I can read it from here, right? Okay. We can read it. Yes, let's read it together. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, his son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order, because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and in the wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes and has power well given. Before Isaac had left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the ruler of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will hear on the third day. From now you will go up to the temple of the Lord. Come on, somebody. I will add 15 years to your life, and I will deliver you in this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. Then Isaiah said, Prepare a fortress of figs. They did so and applied it to the oil and the recovery. Hezekiah had asked Isaiah, What will be the sign that the Lord will heal me and that I will go up to the temple of the Lord on the third day from now? Isaiah answered, This is the Lord's sign to you that the Lord will do what he has promised. Shall the shadow go forward ten steps, or shall it go back ten steps? It is a simple matter for the shadow to go forward ten steps, said Hezekiah. Rather have it go back ten steps. Then the prophet Isaiah called on the Lord, and the Lord made the shadow go back ten steps. It had gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. Amen. Amen. Y'all got excited just by reading the text. I don't think I need to preach anything here because you're going to 
get excited like that. Well, just to let you know, I was excited too. Amen. I want to tag this message again. Like I said, I've, I've come from this text before, and it's, I think it's a, it's a amount of urgency, but be cognizant of your time in 2020. Be cognizant of your time in 2020. Might we bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious and eternal God, it's again that we come before you. We do thank you, Lord, for this blessed opportunity to be in your house one more time. We ask the Lord that you bless your man servant who stand behind the sacred desk. Anoint me, Lord, afresh from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet that I might preach this gospel one more time. Yeah. Father God, we ask a special blessing upon the congregation. Give them, O oh Lord, receptive ears to hear what thus said the Lord. And Father God, when all the preaching and shouting and singing, when all that's over, would we pray, Lord, that somebody may come crying to the altar. What must I do to be saved? And we will be so happy to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray that all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. Let me, um, I recognize the first lady of the house. Please forgive me, first lady. Um, this is my son's wife, okay, so I have to recognize her. Amen. God bless you. My brothers and sisters, This is the second month in the new year. We have entered into a new decade, and some have made at the beginning of January a new, new Year's resolution on at least a, a, a thought of making one. However, I did notice in time past there was a common thread among those who made New Year's resolutions. Usually, resolutions would be losing weight, Am I right about it? Yeah. Exercising more? Yeah. Eating healthier food? Yeah. But not so this year. The common thread that I have noticed was the word time. Time seems to be a concern for most people today. Whether you are young or old, or whether you're rich or poor, it is the forethought in most people's mind about time. Am I right about the church? Yes. On today's show last year during the Christmas holidays, Al Roper was asked a question. You, you do know who Al Roper is, don't you? Yes. But just in case you don't know, he is a meteorologist, he's a journalist, he's a television personality, an actor, and all. In other words, this African American brother has got it together. Has he been, he has been richly blessed in his career. He makes anywhere from 4.8 to 10 million dollars a year. Shut up, preacher. Not bad from a boy who grew up in Queens, New York. Am I right about it? It would be easy to say that he is blessed to get whatever he wants. However, I believe the question that was posed to him, now, now it's not for baby. If you, if you could have one thing for Christmas, what would it be? That was the question. And he answered, and his answer was time. I don't know if Al was feeling his mortality or just what he was thinking. But in my humble opinion, he did not qualify his answer like he should have. Got to mess with that. Up. Time has many verbs. In the third chapter of Ecclesiastes, Solomon, the son of David, the wisest man that ever lived, pre the preacher stated that everything that is a season in a time and ever purpose under the heaven. He spoke of 28 variables of time. Here they are. A time to be born. A time to die. A time to plant. A time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill. A time to heal. A time to break down. A time to build up. A time to weep. A time to love. A time to mourn. A time to dance. A time to cast away stones. A time to gather stones together. A time to embrace. A time to refrain from embracing. A time to get. A time to lose. A time to keep. And a time to cast away. A time to rent. A time to sow. A time to keep silent. A time to speak. A time to love. A time to hate. A time for war. And a time of peace. 28 girls. Can I work it this morning? Let me mess with this thing for a little bit. God 
needs to be qualified. In other words, one needs to be more specific than just state the word time. Realistically speaking, these thoughts need to be specified time frame. When asking for more time, you have to be specific. Come on, somebody. You can't go to God in your time way. Who do you think you're talking to? Come on, somebody. We find, listen, 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 listen. We find in the text this morning that Hezekiah was asking for more time too. The question we should be asking is, who is Hezekiah? The Bible describes that Hezekiah was a king who had a close, listen to this thing, you got to get this one in. Hezekiah who had a close relationship with God. See, that, that's just, I, 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 I can stay here for a moment, but I got to preach on. But he had, just remember, he had a close relationship with God. And one who did what was, watch this now, one who did was good and right and faithful in the sight of God. How y'all looking at me? Let me keep on preaching. <laughs> Yet, watch this, I want you to give this one there. Yet, now I got to go back. What was good and right and faithful in the eyesight of the Lord? And watch this. Yet that did not stop sickness from seizing his body. Shut up, preacher. Even though with his success as a king, he had experienced victory and triumph over the ruins of all the other Syria, he still was afflicted with illness. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yes. Yeah. See, see, see what, 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 what does this say to, to our sickness that, that we experience as Christians? It says that we are not exempt. Regardless of how close you, you we, we walk with God, things are going to happen. Am I right about it? Sickness is going to come upon your body. Am I right about it? I don't care. It's going to happen. Come on, somebody. The Bible declares in verse 1 of chapter 20 that Hezekiah was at, listen to this, at the point of death when the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said, Put your house in order. Well, I ain't finished. Don't, don't say amen yet. Wait. Don't say amen. Because you are going to die and you will not recover. Say the Lord. That's some tough stuff there. Am I right? My brothers and sisters, I don't care if you are a king of a great nation or a pauper here in the streets of Richmond. No one wants to hear those words. You are going to die. I don't care how much religion you think you got or how many Bibles you took under your arm when you come to church and or, or come to Bible study. How many crosses you might have dangling around your neck. You don't want to hear those words. You are going to die. Set the Lord. Never read right about the church. You can, you can talk all that stuff you want. You can walk around, and press around, talk all that mess you want. But you hear those words that you going to die. Set the Lord. It's going to mess with you. Just what it's going to tell the truth. So I can't preach this mess but so many times at the beginning of the year because the beginning of the year will be up pretty soon. So, so I got to preach now. You don't mind if I preach this term. Okay, this is my, this is my boy. Come on, somebody. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. We, we, we know. We know that as long as we live on this earth, we are going to age. Yeah. Am I right, brother? My wife, yeah. whose birthday is today, and, and, and your pastor, who happens to be my son, our son, celebrate his birthday, will celebrate his birthday on Wednesday, and my grandson the day after. So, so we are going to age. Yeah. Am I right about it? They both know about age. Am I right about it? Honey, you know about it, and my son, he knows about it. And sadly, one day, one day, some of us might hear those words, or time will just stop, and the Lord will take you home. You just got to be ready. You got to be ready then. In other words, time will be no more. As we know it, I often say jokingly that I went to bed at the age of 35. And I woke up the next morning and I was 65 years old. And wonder what where did the time go? So you 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 raising those five fingers about your
sun turning fire. Because no doubt in my mind you wonder where did the time go? Look like he was just born. Now he's five years old. Come on somebody. But you know what that means, don't you? That means that you five years old. Come on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm almost feeling this way, or, or do I get some help from the, from the congregation this morning? All I want you to say, hey man, just be feeling like I'm not in the house by myself. Eyes, eyes, eyes. Eyes, six and six years old. I know I don't look it. Some folks can't do that. But I got to hide you. I, I feel like I want to do it again. Come on, Lord. Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm feeling it this morning. The sad truth of the matter is that just a few weeks ago, I had to handle the death of three black men. One was 37, the other was 35, the other one was 24. All died of gunshot wounds. And we've been praying for the city. Something is going on, I tell you. And the week before that, I had to work with two families that, that lost children. My coworker, one of my coworkers, and I see um, Tiffany is back there. She's one of my coworkers. She just came to visit the here, along with Sister Vivian back there. They, they checking me out to see, right, see, right. see if I can preach. You, you know how you do. Well, I ain't worried about that. I thank God that you showed up. See, God got a word for them too. Oh, yeah. Honey, don't hide your face over there. Amen. Yeah. But one of my co-workers, one of my co-workers commented that, that, that we are not safe anywhere anymore. Right. Referring to the young men that got shot. Think about it. Think about this. When you heard of a story like the one of the shooting that took place in Texas. You, you heard about it. The story reads like this. Lives were saved when a member of the volunteer security team at a Texas church fatally shot a gunman who had opened fire on the congregation during a Sunday morning worship. In that shooting, two people died. What am I trying to say this morning? We are living in a time where we all must be cognizant of our time. Because death does not have an age on it. And a bullet does not care where it lodges. Am I right about it? There could be a gunman sitting in the con this congregation this morning. And I know that does not sound good or nice, but that's the reality that we are living in today. Am I right about it? That's, that is why we need to be cognizant of our time. Time is precious. If Kobe Bryant was living today, I believe he would testify to the fact this morning that time is precious. Kobe got on that got on that chopper with his young daughter. Did not realize that was going to be his last fight. So we got to be cognizant. See, this, this, this time thing, this time thing, you, you, you don't want to play with this thing. This, 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 I'm going somewhere with this thing, so you got to work with me. Because I am 66 years old, and I have no When the announcement came, listen to this, when the announcement came to Hezekiah that he was going to die, in verse 2, the Bible declared that Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and petitioned or prayed to, unto God for more time. The Bible declared that God heard his prayer. And before Isaiah, the prophet had left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him to go back and tell Hezekiah he has heard his prayer watch this and seen his tears and that he would be healed as a matter of fact God added 15 years to 
seems like. My brother, it took, that was a powerful prayer. See, I know y'all were getting excited just to don't read that thing. Yeah. Am I right about that? Because when you see God move like that, you want God to move for you like that. Am I right about that? Stop playing with me, man. Am I right about it, church? Yes, sir. What can we learn from, from the text this morning that, that, that might help us as we journey through this thing called time? We, need, we, we, we know that God heard and granted Hezekiah healing in his body and gave him an extension of time on his life. But what caused God to move after a death sentence had been given to him? I believe, I believe there are four little nuggets in the text this morning based on the action of Hezekiah that can help us understand what moves God that might affect time. See, the reality is all of us sitting in here. And we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Everybody in here is concerned about time. The first thing that we can learn is that Hezekiah had a prayer life. How many people got a prayer? I mean, how many people really got a serious prayer life? Let me see your hands. Uh-huh. Don't y'all sit in the church now. Yeah, sitting up in hell. You don't try to impress me. You put your hand there. I see it. I see it. I see it, prayer life. In other words, he had a relationship with God. Did you notice in the text? Watch this. Watch what happens here. Did you notice in the text that Hezekiah did not wait on the prophet to pray with him or for him. Now, now, there's nothing wrong in calling on the pastor or the man of God in the time of need. But there are times when it's just going to be you and God. You hear me? You hear me? When Hezekiah was in, listening, you got to get this one. See, because see, this stuff just don't happen overnight. That's right. When Hezekiah was in good health, he went up to the house of the Lord and prayed. In other words, he, 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 he was sincere That's right. in his worship. That's right. you, you, you understand? See, see, look, listen to me, church. I got to put my finger here. Listen to me, church. When you're feeling good, when things are going good, you make sure that your election is short. You make sure you spend some time with the Lord. Am I right about it? I noticed when I asked you a question, do you have a serious prayer life? The majority of you did not hold your hand up. Yeah. Y'all got quiet on that one. All right. So that, that's a reflection. Shut up, preacher. That's a reflection on your relationship with God. Let, let me give you an example. My beautiful wife who sits over there, she, she, she would get mad with me if I would come into the house and not have a conversation with
and you're in the bed. Don't even take time and say, grace on your food. Lord, thank you for the food. Amen. 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 That ain't no relationship, MJ. Excuse me. I call him MJ. Watch this. But see, he was building some stuff here. When he was sick and in bed, the text stated that he turned his face to the wall and began to pray. Some theologian reason that he turned his face to the wall, it was because that it was in the direction of the temple. And when he prayed, it represented a type of prayer. In other words, this man had a relationship with God. See, when he got sick, he did not wait till he, he, he did not wait. He always had a relationship with God, but he didn't wait to get, to get a relationship with God when he was sick. But he had already, as the old folks say, he had already sent up his temple. Can I preach that? Am I, am I right about it? See, when you sit up your temple, see, you always got a house you can go to. You always got a place you can go to. Am I right about it? He didn't wait on it. He didn't wait on it, preacher. He had a relationship. Oh, help me hold the ghost. I'm feeling this thing there. You better leave me alone, son. You won't preach this. You better leave me alone. Messing with me, man. You're looking at me like I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Second, Hezekiah reminded God that, listen, listen to this one, listen to this one. Listen, this is some good stuff here. That's why God got to preach this thing again. I love preaching this thing. Hezekiah reminded God that he walked before him faithfully. What does that mean? That means that he trusted God in all that he did. He was authentic in his belief. He was not a fair weather believer. One day you believe and the next day you don't find all kinds of excuses to skip church. One of the stated that faith in God includes faith in his time. In other words, God is a sovereign God. And he can do anything he's big and bad enough to do. If he want to allow you to get sick, you're going to get sick. But if he wants you to be well, all you have to do is speak the word. Yeah. Who? Shut up, preacher. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Hey! That's enough to get excited about. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Thirdly, in his prayer, listen to this. Hezekiah stated that he was wholeheartedly devoted before God. He was sincere and committed to serving him. Regardless of his condition, he was going to serve God in the house. And let me tell you something about church folks. If you look at me in the wrong way, I'm not going to do nothing. I'm not going to tie. I'm not going to say amen. Some folks don't like this. Look, this, this is what I call this, this is what I classify the hellfire and brimstone preaching. Because see, 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 because some some preaching out there ain't right. I know I'm splitting the bird, but some preaching not not right. Because it's it, it telling all you have to do is smile and say praise the Lord and hallelujah and no commit, you don't have, you don't have to commit to anything. Just come to church and say, Amen, praise the Lord, and you go home. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? See, you gotta do more than that. See, you got, you got folk thinking they're going to heaven and ain't committed to God. As long as the preacher is watching, watch this thing. As long as the preacher is making me feel good and not challenging me, then, I, then I'm good. I can come and sit down and listen to you all day long. Just don't mess with my space. Oh, shut up with me. <laughs> Well, just to put you on notice, God is all up in your space. Right. You can't keep a sovereign God out of your space. Right. Am I right about it? Because some of us got some secrets that we can't talk about. Shut up, preacher. Oh, my. Oh, my. Don't y'all have some secrets? Shut up. I know I do, but I'm covered by the blood. Shut up and hear Thirdly, in his prayer, Hezekiah stated that he, he, he was wholeheartedly devoted before God. He was sincere.
sincere and committed to serving God was regardless of it. He was going to serve him anyhow. And finally, he showed humility. How did he show humility? When those tears were coming down his face, he did not approach God privately, but he was humble. Humble. So you got some prideful Christians out here. Put on a nice suit. Shiny shoes. Chest stuck out. A few dollars in your pocket. You sell them back. In the outside of man. But to God, you ain't nothing but some filthy rain. Shut up in here. Shut up. Even at your own, at your very best. I know, I know I gotta get out of here. No. So, 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 so let's recap those four things. One is once again that I believe moved God. Hezekiah had a relationship with God through prayer. He had a faithful, he was faithful, he was wholehearted, devoted, and he was humble. These are the four things that got that got God attention to cause him to affect time. Notice that Hezekiah did not. Do. Notice what Hezekiah did not do. He did not come before God demanding anything of his God, good services. He modestly begged with tears in his eyes that God would remember not how he had reformed kingdoms by taking away high places and, and cleaning the temple, but how he had focused on serving him. In other words, Hezekiah did a whole lot of things in the name of the Lord. But he didn't want him to, to, to deal with that. He was just saying, Lord, I'm serving you. Hezekiah did not waste words. He, con he, 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 he was of his time. In other words, he, he was very aware of what he was saying. As my wife was saying, he was in the moment. All right. Son, son, I'm talking to this son over here, my son. You are in the moment of time as you approach your 38th birthday. Watch this. You have a beautiful wife beside you. Amen. You have loving children around Amen. you in a church that adores you. Amen. Am I right about it? And, 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 and parents that's praying for you. This is a moment in time you must cherish for the rest of your life. This is, a, this is time of being precious because you can't never get this time So you look at your beautiful wife and your children and your church family and you cherish this moment. The text goes on to say that Hezekiah in verse 8 asked the confirmation of, he of healing and Isaiah responded in verses 9 through 11. He reads this way. I know y'all got to go home the whole time. Isaiah answered, this is the Lord's sign to you that the Lord will do preacher, what he promised. That, that, that's right there. Nothing but shouting words right there. Because when you serve a God, when you're on the Lord's side, and the Lord will do what he said, he will promise he will do, you can't go wrong. Am I right about it? Watch this. Listen to this. Shall the shadow go forward ten steps or shall it go back ten steps? It is a simple matter for the shadow to go forward ten steps. Said Hezekiah, brother, have it to go back ten steps. Then the prophet says to Isaiah, call upon the Lord, and the Lord made the shadow go back ten steps as it had gone down on the staircase of Ahaz's name. I got to stop here for a moment. I know y'all getting tired and everything, but I got, to, I got to stop here for a moment. I got to stop here for a moment because, see, when I read that text, I got mad with Hezekiah. Let me come to here just for a moment, then I'm going back to you. I want you to get this one. I got mad with Hezekiah. You know why I got mad with Hezekiah? Because Hezekiah said it's easy for the sun to go down, to go, go forward and go down. But it made it sound like it was difficult for the sun to go, for the time to go back and go down. He even said that was difficult. But so I serve a God that there is nothing too hard for God. What you talking about, man? My God can do anything. My God can make the sun go forward. Back up. I made my point when I came down here. I just want to let you know. 
Just want to let you know. I said, I hope I'm not embarrassing you, but that's all right, too. Because I still got a God I got to serve. Amen. Am I right about it? Yes. <laughs> I know y'all think I'm But y'all don't believe y'all just check Jeremiah 32, 37 out. He'll tell you. He says, he states that I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Watch this. Watch this. Let me, let me get my own. Let me get my own. Is there anything too hot for me? Come on, somebody. Who would serve a God like that? Let me preach the thing, I tell you. God thought it fit to confirm the unprecedented favor of healing his body and letting him live for an additional 15 years of a miracle by turning back the time. Why? I believe that Hezekiah was cognizant of his time and he knew exactly what he what to pray for. And most of all, he had a relationship with God. My brothers and sisters, we need to be cognizant of our time too. And realize, and I want you to get this, this is this is one of my last points here. I want you to realize that only what we do for Christ will last. Watch this. Everything else is just window dressing. Let me, let me read that again. Only what you do for Christ will last. Everything else is just window dressing. Because the other else that you're doing, you can't get in heaven on that. Am I right about it? The else that you're doing is nothing but blessings from God. In the new decade of 2020, we need to focus on our relationship with God through prayer by being faithful and wholehearted about our calling. So, 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 so that when we do get into a situation as Hezekiah did, we too can turn our faces to the wall and petition God for what you need. It does not have to be a life-threatening situation, but, but it's all about your relationship with God. As one preacher put it, and he was preaching a funeral one day, he said, it is better to have him, meaning Jesus, and not need him, you can finish the rest of it, and need him and not have him. That's what I call a relationship with God. Unlike Hezekiah, the miracle with the time clock, God has already worked a miracle in our lives too. When he sent his son to die on Calvary Cross, Jesus was affecting time. He hung from the sixth to the ninth hour where darkness came over the earth. The sun refused to shine. Jesus was affecting time. Remember right about it? The curtain of the temple split from top to bottom, Jesus was affecting time. The earth shook, the rock split, the tombs opened, and the dead were raised. Jesus was affecting time. But early on that Sunday morning, it was time. It was time. It was time. And Jesus got up with all power in his hand. His name is above everything that every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall be fed. That he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Who would serve a God like that? Is there anybody willing to give God some time this morning and praise him? He took time to wake you up this morning. He took time to clothe you in your right mind. He took time to heal your body. He took time to, to put roof over your head. Is there anybody? Willing to serve him right now. You need to stand to your feet and give God some praise because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lifted up. I don't know what you're going to do, but I come to praise him this morning because he's worthy, I tell you. He's worthy. Don't sit down. Oh my God, don't sit down! Don't sit down! Oh my God. Be cognizant. Be cognizant of your time. Time. Time is important. Now I'm getting ready to open the doors of the church. Can they play that song? 
Is that child? Now I want y'all to sit there for a moment. Now I want you to just listen. Bring it up a little bit. Bring it up a little bit. Listen, listen. See, because time will be all over us, Priscilla.
As a musician, play soft, I'm going to open the doors of the church.